Welcome to round one of the Jeff Pereira Home Energy SM Championship held at Kevin Harvick's Kern Raceway. This prestigious raceway is home to a beautiful motocross track, two dirt oval tracks, and three asphalt oval tracks. Not only is this raceway perfect for race cars, but it's also perfect for any type of motorcycle you can imagine. So come on out for round two of the Jeff Pereira Home Energy SM Championship, August 3rd, 2024. Before we got today's events underway, we had our autograph session with all of our fans. And as you can tell, we had a great turnout for the round one of Jeff Pereira Home Energy SM Championship. Hundreds of autographs were signed. Multiple interviews were done with our riders, even prepping the future of our sport. Along with Supermoto, we had some extracurricular activities going on after our races. I just want to give a big thanks to each one of our sponsors that helped make this series possible, such as Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. If you're ever in a street accident, definitely reach out to them. We have Fred Cummings Motorsports, Mike Helm 57 Racing, Protech Signs, Toxic Moto Racing, Prince Shack, Bridgestone, and Warp 9 Racing. Big thanks to everybody that supports our series and helps make this possible. Let's go ahead and talk to one of our pro riders, Graham Watson, to see his thoughts on the track. So on this part of the track, you come in through the right-hander, try not to clip the tires, so you can get set up for this left. And because of the way the weight shifts through the transition, the bike gets really light and comes down right in that black slippery patch of burnt rubber, uh, which gives you a tiny little slide and helps you set up for that right-hand corner where you can get it flipped over and head right into the super slick dirt section. So after that right-hander I talked about, I'm pretty much trying to turn this into a V because it is slick. It's marbly and sandy, and I already lost the front in the dirt right here once. And then you try to turn it into a V so you can take as much speed into the corner and get yourself pointed right back out again. Let's go ahead and take a look around Kevin Harvick's Kern Raceway. Off the start, our riders are gonna go straight into a small left-hand turn to a quick right-hand turn and re-enter the NASCAR banking, go up the banking, where they're gonna be cutting down in the middle of turn two of the NASCAR track with a harsh transition onto a fast straightaway. This is going to be a big passing zone for riders as you can go wide here to carry momentum, but you leave the door open for other riders to come under you. After that, we're coming into a double left-hand corner, down a small chute into another left-hand corner, into a triple right-hand sweeper. Now entering the back section of the track, we do a quick left, to a quick right where we enter the off-road section which is going to be great for our open dtx dirt track riders as it's a double left hand corner something that they'll be very used to exiting we'll do a double right and do a quick tight left where we will enter in between turning three and four on the nascar track of the banking come all the way down the front straight in front of the crowd hitting speeds of 90 to 100 miles an hour Coming into the first main event of the evening, we have the Open DTX Sportsman class with Wyatt Carter on pole position, Isaiah Canales in second, Travis Warren third, Nick Henry in fourth, Johnny Custom in fifth, and Joey Crabtree in sixth. And the green flag is up for the Open DTX Sportsman class. And it looks like Isaiah Canales jumps out to an early lead, followed by Travis Ward and Wyatt Carter. Oh, and it looks like Wyatt Carter gets a great run out of turn two, going up to turn three, up the banking, and can he hold Travis Ward around the outside? Yes, he cuts down and passes Travis Ward for a second. And it looks like Wyatt Carter is going for the lead. Oh, and he makes a mistake, and he almost had the lead from Isaiah Canales. Looks like he's going for it again, and he just can't quite get under Isaiah. Wyatt Carter is going from third to almost first in the matter of a few corners. Entering the off-road for the first time in this race, Isaiah Canales looking to build up an early lead, has about three or four bike links. We have the battle for fifth between Johnny Custom and his wife, Joey Crabtree. Coming down the front straightaway for the first time onto lap two, Isaiah has built up that lead by a couple bike links over Wyatt Carter. And through the infield, Wyatt has gained some bikes back on Isaiah. As we head into the off-road section again, look at Wyatt coming to that dirt section. He is flying in there and he gets out of there good. He's all over the rear wheel of Isaiah Canales now. 
back onto the front straight away. Wyatt Carter is close to Isaiah this time. Let's see if he can make something happen going into turn one. Not quite yet, but he's still all over the rear wheel of Isaiah. Wyatt goes in deep, tries to go around the outside, can't quite make it stick. Travis Ward still in third place, falling close behind just in case these guys make it. Oh, and it looks like Isaiah may have cut the track right there. We're going to have to go to the referee to see if there's going to be an infraction put on Isaiah for cutting the corner. Wyatt looking up the inside, and he can't make it stick. Isaiah is definitely holding that line tight and keeping Wyatt at bay, but Wyatt is working Isaiah all over the track right now. We're about halfway through this race, and as we head into the off-road section once more, Travis Ward's still on third, holding these guys just close enough in case there's a mistake. Wyatt still following closely right behind Isaiah. Travis Ward a close third, waiting for a mistake from the front two runners. Coming down the front straightaway, Wyatt Carter is fully tucked, trying to get as aerodynamic as possible to pass Isaiah. Coming back through the infield, it looks like Wyatt's trying to go to the outside. No, going to the inside of Isaiah. And Wyatt's trying to cut up under Isaiah. Still cannot make that move work. He's been trying that line the last few laps. Hasn't been able to make anything stick yet. But he's right behind Isaiah, pushing Isaiah to his limits. Let's see if Isaiah is able to withstand the pressure and hold off Wyatt for the rest of this race. Isaiah, the flat track and speedway runner he is, gains a little bit. Travis Ward still in third place. Followed by Nick Henry in fourth. Coming down the front straightaway in front of the crowd. Isaiah has gained a couple bike lanes over Wyatt Carter. But Wyatt gets it right back in the infield. And is he going to go for first? No, he slips up just a little bit. And he's unable to make the move. It looks like he's all... Oh, he almost hits the rear wheel of Isaiah and has to slow down. Loses a couple bike lanes right there. Wyatt is so good in this tight intersection of the track. Gains a lot of time back on Isaiah. Wyatt coming in hot into that dirt section, overshoots the corner and, and loses a few bike lengths right there. Oh, and something is going on as Wyatt has lost more and more time off of Isaiah. It, it almost looks like Wyatt is slowing down going into turn one. Something must be going on. Either he's getting tired or maybe his front brakes are fading because these are the stock front brake systems on the Honda here. And he might be getting some front brake fade and not be able to slow down as much. So he might have backed off. Will this allow Travis Ward to catch up to Wyatt and take second place overall? Oh, and it looks like we have a rider down. Yes, yes, that is Johnny Custom. He has tucked the front in the dirt section, but he is picking his bike up, so he looks to be okay, which is awesome to see. As our leader, Isaiah Canales, does pass him for to put him a lap down. We now have Wyatt still in a close second, but coming into the final lap, I think Isaiah is going to take this one. As we hit the white flag with Isaiah Canales, Wyatt Carter in second, Travis Ward in third. Isaiah seems to have locked this race down. But Travis Ward is gaining on Wyatt Carter. I think it's just a little bit too late to have anything happen. Our leader, Isaiah Canales, through the off-road section one last time before hitting the checkered flag. Here comes in Wyatt, and here comes Travis. Gained significant time on this final lap, but I think he's just going to run out of time to take that second place overall from Wyatt. And here comes our winner, Isaiah Canales, our first Open DTX Sportsman winner, followed by Wyatt Carter in second place and Travis Ward in third place. Here is our results for the weekend in the Open DTX Sportsman class. We have Isaiah Canales in first, Wyatt Carter Crum in second, Travis Ward in third, Nick Henry in fourth, Joey Crabtree in fifth, and Johnny Custom in sixth. Let's go to the podium to see what our riders had to say about their race. Where are you from? Travis Ward, and I'm from a little racing town called Bakersfield, California. Bakersfield! Well, I want to thank Johnson Pierce for putting this on and his whole crew, making this possible on short notice. Uh, we thought we could come out here and, and do a good show for you. Glad you guys showed up for us. Thank you. How about that, man? You guys are racing ski too. What's your name and where are you from? Bakersfield! Uh, I'd just like to thank Bronson and 
Kotex designs to put on this event and let us bring some flat track tires out here. We do a lot of flat track races in our store. It's pretty awesome. We need more fans. And, uh, yeah, it was just awesome. Great experience. Anybody can do it. You can run knobbies. You can run flat track tires. Go buy some. And, oh, and it's my first time doing this, guys. I've never done this before. I came out and practiced yesterday. Got the hang of it, and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to race tomorrow. Let's get it done. So you've been riding motorcycles for a long time. This is just your first time on Supermoto, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. I've been riding since I was four years old. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a dirt bike rider, contact your over here. You can be part of this series next race. Very cool. Thanks a lot, dude. Let's go ahead and take a look at our SM1 Pro main event lineup. Starting on pole, we have Kevin Vergenz. Second is Graham Watson, followed by John Lyles, Parker Pittman, and Michael Sedlicek. For our SM2 amateur main event lineup, we have Adam Cooper on pole, Joe Winston, Troy Simmons, Chris Pachirio, Cliff Sullivan, and Hadley Melton. As our board girl gets off the track, our riders anticipate the green flag drop. And there it is. It looks like Graham Watson is off to a great start. It looks like Michael Sedlicek has a little bit of a lean to the left and cuts off Parker Pittman. Almost runs into John Lyles. But Graham Watson does secure the first position off of the start, heading up the banking. Parker Pittman did get buried right there and is almost in dead last. With Graham Watson in first, Kevin Vergenz in second, John Lyles in third, Michael Sedlicek in fourth. As we head into the infield of the track, Kevin Regans is going to have a look around the outside of Graham Watson. It looks like he overshoots the corner a little bit. And John Lyles tries to go up the inside of Kevin. Isn't able to make it quite happen yet. Let's see if John is able to make a move here in the next few corners. Michael Sedlicek just biding his time right behind John Lyles, waiting to see what's going to happen. As we enter the off-road section on the first lap, we have all of our riders still bunched up. Graham Watson still in the lead, followed right behind Kevin Vergens, and John Lyles is our top three. As our riders get back, oh, and it looks like Graham Watson makes a mistake coming out of that final corner. Is Kevin Vergens gonna be able to get him down the straightaway? Kevin is right there behind Graham. Is he gonna be able to make something happen going into turn one? Does it quite look like it? Not quite yet. Our top four riders are still lined up back to back. Oh, and it looks like Michael Sedlicek is going to have a look up the inside of John Lyles and makes the move for third place. And it looks like John Lyles has a retaliation, comes back, takes the position back from Michael Sedlicek, gets back into third. The There is a small gap between the front two now. Because of them battling, it might be slowing them down a little bit. John's going to have to work extra hard to catch the front two now. There's about a 10 bike length gap between our front two and third and fourth, fifth place. As we into the off-road section once again, Kevin again still right on the rear wheel of Graham Watson. Is he going to be having to look up the inside in one of these corners? He had a pretty good drive down the front straightaway in the last lap. Let's see if he's able to make something happen there. John Lyles goes to the chalk and you can see on his tires there's still some chalk on there. You better be careful going through that first right-hand corner. Graham Watson extends his lead down that front straightaway to a couple of bike lengths. We have Adam Cooper, number 23, Joe Winston, number 14, and Parker Pittman, number 17. As we go up the banking, Michael Sedlicek is still following John Lyles, but our front two are starting to slowly pull away from the rest of the field. Graham Watson is holding that inside while you have Kevin Regans looking to the outside of Graham. Is Kevin going to be able to look up the inside in the next corner? 
John Lau still holding up. Michael Sedlicek. Let's see if he can hold him off for the rest of the race. Kevin over again, still biding his time, right behind Graham, trying to set something up to make that pass with the lead. Oh, and John Lowes makes a small little mistake and almost loses the rear. Allows Michael Sedlicek to get right on the rear tire of John Lowes. Now we have Adam Cooper in this fight for third, number 23, followed by Joe Winston and Parker Pittman. John Lyles gets a good little gap over Michael Sedlicek coming out of that last corner. The front two are starting to pull away with this. Mm -hmm. We're on board with Michael Sedlicek at the moment following John Lyles. Let's see if he can make something happen here in the coming laps. Graham Watson coming down the front straight here. Oh, and it looks like Kevin Vergens makes the move up the inside of Graham Watson. Let's see if Graham is able to retaliate in this next corner. It doesn't look like it. Kevin Vergens protects that inside from Graham, and he's able to secure first position and keep moving forward. Let's see if Graham can latch onto the back of Kevin Vergens and learn some lines from him and see what he can do better to hopefully pass Kevin back for the lead. Our battle for third is tightening up as we have John Lyles, Michael Sedlicek, and Adam Cooper all wheel to wheel. They're starting to put a small gap in between the two riders behind them. Graham Watson still right on the rear tire of Kevin Regens. John Lyles steering with that rear wheel. Typical dirt track move. Gains a couple of bike links on Michael Sedlicek. Oh, and it looks like Joe Winston in the back makes a mistake and slides out and has to cut that corner. Let's see if there's going to be an infraction on him at the end of the race. Kevin Vergens, Graham Watson, John Lyles, Michael Sedlicek, Adam Cooper, Joe Winston, and Parker Pittman. All a tight battle for that third position while our front two runners are running away with this race. Michael Sedlicek tries to go up high and get a good drive down low, and he does. He makes it happen over John Lyles. He makes the move for third position. And is he going to tight? Yes, he's going to go in tight in this corner, so that way John Lyles cannot come back under him. John does try to cut up hard under that inside. Isn't able to make anything happen though. It does look like Kevin is pulling away just a little bit from Graham. The battle is tightening up. Joe Winston and Parker Pittman are catching our front, our third, fourth, and fifth place riders. We're about halfway through this race, and as we enter the off-road section once again, we have Kevin Vergens leading Graham Watson, and we have a tight battle for third. Michael Sedlicek, John Lyles. Adam Cooper, Joe Winston, and Parker Pittman. This is going to be one for the books, folks. Remember, there is money on the line in this race. 550 to win, 350 per second. Our front two runners are securing those positions at the moment, but third place is $300, and we have a five rider battle for third place at the moment. So who is gonna be taking home that $300? It looks like Adam Cooper goes up the inside of John Lyles, and John Lyles tries to cut back up under him. But what what happened? Oh, it looks like John Lyles stalled his motorcycle. That is so unfortunate as he was looking so good in this race. He was trying to retaliate on Michael Sedlicek, and Adam Cooper just goes up under him, and he stalls the motorcycle. Let's see if he can get that bike running again. Kevin Vergens slowly gapping Graham Watson for second, first place, first and second place. Adam Cooper trying to have a look up the inside of Michael Sedlicek. Just because John Lyles is out of this battle doesn't mean those other four are going to give up. We still have a tight battle for third place. Kevin Bergens extending his lead over Graham Watson heading into lap seven. John Lyles did get that bike started and he is back on track going that is good to see. On board here with Michael Sedlicek, securing that third position down. Graham Watson still keeping Kevin Vergenz honest. Anything, any mistake from Kevin will 
put Graham right back on the rear wheel of Kevin. Adam Cooper is trying to have a look on Michael Sedlicek. Michael Sedlicek, aka Mike on Bikes, is still holding down that third position. He's riding very well on that Stark Park electric bike. He was telling me that it has 80 horsepower and that thing is a rocket ship. Oh, it looks like our leader, Kevin Vergenz, is coming into lap traffic. Is he going to be able to get around and clean? The battle for third is still a very tight battle. Let's see if Parker Pittman can make any moves on the guys right in front of him. Michael Sedlicek on that electric bike coming down the front straight. Let's see how much horsepower that thing really has. And it looks like he gaps the other three riders by quite a bit. He was not lying when he was saying how fast that thing is. But it does seem the other riders gained a little bit entering the corner on him. So might be too much power and speed for him. Looks like Graham Watson is coming up the inside of, of a left rider. Didn't hold him up too much. I wonder if he was able to gain any on our leader, Kevin Regens. The battle for third still rages on with Michael Sedlicek, Adam Cooper, Joe Winston, and Parker Pittman. As the Parker looks to go around the outside of Joe Winston. And is he able to make the outside line work? It looks like he is. Oh no, he has a little... A little bobble goes wide and Joe Winston goes right back under him. Parker Pittman was working so hard for that position. As we enter the off-road section once more, our battle for third is still as tight as ever, wheel to wheel. Oh, and it looks like Joe Winston misses a shift up the hill. Is Parker Pittman going to be able to go around the outside again on Joe Winston? Yeah, it looks like he is going to. He's going to make it stick. Parker Pittman has overcome Joe Winston and taking the fifth position. Oh, and he overshoots the corner. Joe Winston was not close enough to make a retaliation. Let's see if Parker Pittman can set his sights on Michael Sedlicek and Adam Cooper for third and fourth place as our riders are coming up on some lap traffic. You can hear Michael Sedlicek yelling at our lapped rider, letting him know that he's there. Parker Pittman is already on the rear wheel of Adam Cooper, almost runs, runs into the back of him. Michael Sedlicek still unable to get past that lapped rider. He's going to need to get past soon. There goes Kevin Regens onto the white flag, our final lap of the race. We still have that tight battle for third as all of our riders looking to get past that back marker it looks like Parker Pittman has gone around Adam Cooper but the lap marker gets in his way and Adam Cooper goes back up the inside of Parker Pittman Graham Watson riding to a solid second place finish Our battle for third still rages on with Michael Sedlicek, Adam Cooper, and Parker Pittman. All three of them wheel to wheel in the final turn of the off-road section. And here is your SM1 Pro winner, Kevin Vergens. Second place is Graham Watson. Let's see who will be third. It looks like that electric Stark Varg is going to have the speed to outrun these two. But it looks like Parker Pittman gets under Adam Cooper for fourth place. And that will bring us to our SM1 Pro standings with Kevin Vergenz in first, Graham Watson in second, Michael Sedlicek on the electric bike in third, Parker Pittman in fourth, and John Lyles who stalled the bike in fifth. Let's go ahead and go to the podium to see what our riders had to say about their race. I currently reside in Baja, California, Mexico. Baja, 
wraps up this adventure real good. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That's cool, man. It takes a lot of people to make it happen. Now you're coming. Let's go ahead and take a look at our SM2 amateur standings with Adam Cooper in first, Joe Winston in second, and Troy Simmons in third. This is great. I'm glad Bronson. Thank you for putting this on. I hope I can't wait to log us. It's going to be a good time. How's everybody in Bakersfield doing? Our SM2 amateur winner, Adam Cooper, doing a burnout and enjoying his win in front of this massive crowd at Kevin Harvick Crane Raceway. Thanks for tuning in to round one of the Jeff Pereira Home Energy SM Championship held at Kevin Harvick Kern Raceway. We'll see everybody August 3rd for round two. Let's take a look at some of the extracurricular activities we had going on after the races. Such as figure eight racing. We had a drift show competition. We had oval skid plate car racing where they removed the rear wheels and put metal skid plates on the bottom. We had a jet engine that was put into a truck giving us a show. I was a little skeptical when they said they were gonna have drag boat racing at Kern Raceway with no water, but they sure did have some drag boat racing. Oh! We had a monster truck show showing us how to smash some trailers. showing 
us how to do a few donuts. And here comes our truck of mayhem, ready to cause some mayhem in front of this huge crowd at Kevin Harvick's Kern Raceway. And what better way to end the night than a demolition derby with the last man standing wins format. <laughs>